Owen, what are you currently reading? I'm currently reading uh, The Chemistry of Tears, which is the new Peter Carey book. I'm a big fan of, of his, um, and have been ever since The True History of the Kelly Gang, which is in my top five favorite books of all time. What are your top five favorite books of all time? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. Well, Peter Carey's in there with The History of the Kelly Gang. William Boyd would definitely be in there with uh, Any Human Heart, which is one of my favorite books. Um, I think Lord of the Flies would be in there as well. Uh, Huckleberry Finn, uh, possibly. And then the, fir uh, the first ha Hannibal Lecter book, Red Dragon, I think is the classic thriller. So, but I could go on, you know. I have a different top five books every week. I really wish I had written Peter Pan because it's the perfect children's book, I think. It's not too long, but it's chunky enough that the kid feels like they've read something. Uh, the story is fantastic. The characters, I mean, every one of the characters has gone into the uh, public domain. Everybody knows who Captain Hook is and Peter Pan and Wendy uh, and the Lost Boys and Smee. Everybody knows them. So that's a real test of how successful or, or enduring a book is. If you can just mention a character and people who have never read the book know who that character is. What is a book that you could read over and over again and never tire of? I love Treasure Island, the book by R.L. Stevenson. And as a kid, I was just scared. But you know, when Jim was hiding and the peg leg part was coming along in the dark beside him, it was one of the best scary passages ever written. That's a sign of a good book for me is if I'm reading it and I read about two pages and I put it down because I have to write something because I feel inspired. And Treasure Island does that every time. Is there one book that stands out from your high school experience that made an impression? I was in a class of you know, 30 boys with 30 pubescent jittery boys trying, you know, just getting us to sit down was a, f a feat. And so what book they did, did they decide would be appropriate? And, and this happened so much it's sad. They decided Portrait of a Lady was the book for the boys. So we, were, we just didn't, we didn't understand what, what this thing was. It, it, I've seen that look before on my son's face when someone asked him, uh, what's your favorite vegetable? And he's like, I don't even understand that question. What do you mean favorite vegetable? That's like, what's my favorite punishment? But uh, Portrait of a Lady to Adolescent Boys is not the book. I mean, now I read it and I know it's amazing, but you, you're explaining it to adolescent boys. Uh, OK, it's a book about a lady in Victorian times. And, uh, you know, she's quite serious. And we're like, well, does she kill anybody? No, no, but she gets a bit depressed and she goes upstairs. And that's like the plot of the book. And we just and right in that moment, half of those kids decided never to read again. You know, just like that, it can happen. And uh, so it's so important in schools. And I'm so happy to see it's happening now where kids are getting books they actually will read or they can identify with. What do you think makes a, a great book have that kind of meat? Do you think, is it the characters for you? Is it the plot? Um, I think for me, I think it's the voice. And if, if they like reel me in slowly, um, I will go with them. And it's like a conversation with someone. If I find you interesting, I will listen to what you have to say.